Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, and welcome to another fabulous match of Hollow Knight Ill All Skills, not Ill Skills, All Skills. Um, today we have a fifth round match between Edu Boy 25 and Water with Flavor. Uh, this is a patch 1-2-2-1 match, and it is one of the final matches of our prelims bracket, so it should be a good race overall. My name is Herm, if you don't remember me from the last commentary I did very recently. Um, but I am this time joined on the mic by my lovely friend, Rhino Peter. Hey, how's it going, everyone? I'm excited for this race. This should be pretty good. Um, both two runners that I'm both somewhat familiar with, and I'm really excited to get to commentate this race. Yes, it should be really good. Um, we're expecting a pretty decent race. Um, Water has sort of joked around about the fact that he's lost pretty good PB paces of late. Um, so we could see some some good improvement there. And then Edu overall, very solid runner. Um, PB of 5306 and holds a comm sob in the desolate dive segment. So both these runners yeah. definitely have stuff going on. And that's a super interesting thing to note because I think that's a relatively new comm sob for Edu. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and I, I've just counted the runners down, so we should be seeing them start momentarily. They both gave me the ready. Yeah, this will be fun. So do we know both runners' current PBs, Herm? Um, cancel themselves, but now I'm okay. Um, let me do a little bit of detective work. I know Edu's is 5306. I believe Waters is somewhere in the realm of 54. Um, but I have this, I have this information in the DM with Virgil. So, as we have commentated for Water before. Oh, okay. So his PB is actually 5542, but he's specifically noted when um, conversing with me prior to the race that. PBs really aren't everything. Water has been on 53 pace three separate times. Um, and so I think he's really looking to improve his some of us is, from what I've heard, a lot lower than his current PB. So he's sort of just waiting for the run. And in a no reset setting like this one, it could very much be here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's one of my favorite things about watching races that anything can happen. You know, it's like you, you can have whatever PB you have and you can have whatever times you have, but you got to perform on the race day in the race and that's what makes you so exciting anything could happen yeah exactly and as we see the runners heading in through king's pass i am currently realizing that in the utter um silliness of having two races in a row i don't have a knock knock joke ready um no, so no. i'm gonna find one and at some other point at which we reach the door we will do a knock knock joke I promise there will still be knock-knock jokes. I will not fail anybody in my duty to dispense them, but it's just going to be a little bit late, and I am most sorry for that, folks. Um, how, how could you? Yes. I know. It is, it is unfortunate. And this is to everybody in chat, your friendly reminder to send Virgil and I more knock-knock jokes. We are very much running out. Um, and so... Yeah. Times are yeah, tough out here. More. Yeah, exactly. There's there's great <laughs> scarcity of knock knock jokes, but yeah. I'll find if anybody has an idea of an adequate door that would serve as a, a good point for a knock knock joke. Um, let me there's know. Now we'll head into always King's Bread. You know, abyss, yeah. We always do that one because we normally have two per race. So, yeah. so let's see if any we'll of the runners see. Let's see what kind of RNG the Gruzzer drop decides to give us. Water getting hit once. Edu getting a clean drop. Nice. He, he just made up like two seconds there too, so that's nice. Yeah. Now they'll just they'll head into this after the arena. We'll hope they can both get double spike. That's one of those things where you know, obviously, if you don't get it, it's not an insane time loss, but it's kind of a mental thing. A lot of times, runners will just sort of reset after a missed double spike. It's just annoying um, right. to sort of throw the first trick of the run. Yeah, water getting as I call it the single spike uh, yeah, with only one aspect. Double spike. Yeah, and he's ahead now. Yeah. Yeah, look at that, about two seconds ahead. Um, and that just goes to show that, like, as as Rhino will tell you many, many times as a runner, um, <laughs> running is all about micro-optimizations and those little things, because, I mean, saving two seconds at a tiny point may not seem like a big deal at all, but that oh, adds yeah. up to such a massive degree. Oh, yeah, and I, I've made the analogy before. Like, imagine if you took your current PB and saved, like, two-tenths of a second in every single room across the run. Like, just think about how much time that would be. Like, it's... Right. The, the, the little tiny optimizations that add up are what really separate, like, 
the super, super top level runners from the, the good and even great runners. Yeah, exactly. And that's not the thing. I mean, if you if you watch the race between between Monster and Axe yesterday, you could see them just hitting all sorts of things that they really optimized. Um, but that being said, I mean, there are there are time saves big and small. Um, there's some fun RNG we'll be seeing throughout the run. Yeah. Um, boss exactly. patterns can really bully you in this in this run. Um, in addition to just all sorts of skips, there are skips galore. Um, and outside of this crossroads split, we'll be seeing a lot of them. Yeah, and we're coming up to the first RNG boss pattern here. Um, regardless of what pattern false knight gives us here it's not dramatic time loss but it is it's not negligible time loss if he decides to jump really far away from you and doesn't give you a good pattern but we'll see what the runners get here looks like edu getting decent rng water getting the best rng you can which is when yeah. the knight jumps to the left yeah that will make up some time for water there um just a little bit but it's one of those things um it's just nice to have and it lets you get out of there really quick. Um, thankfully in this run we only fight False Knight for one cycle. We don't care about the City Crest or the associated Geo. We have our own Geo farming methods. So yeah, yeah it seems Water is about a second behind heading into um, the Ancestral Mound area. Um, Shoutouts to, to the load normalizer that keeps both of these runners pretty close together so far. They will gradually desync, but it's nice to see. So shoutouts to 56 for that. Yeah, definitely. It's and for anyone who I, I assume by this point most people are fairly knowledgeable with the way Hollow Knight speedrunning works. But um, if you guys notice, the timer stops in between room loads. Um, as a community, we we time this game loadlessly, and that's just to eliminate any advantages that would be gained from having a more powerful computer that loads the game faster. Mm -hmm. um, so as such, to to make the race to make these races easier for viewers to watch. Um, Runners are using a load normalizer that attempts its best to normalize how long room loads take, which keeps the race a little bit more synced RTA, so it's a bit more easier to watch. Yeah, and it's it's really nice overall. And speaking mm -hmm. of nice things, shoutouts to Rixian, our eternal timekeeper, um, <laughs> for noting that the runners are one second apart. Edu is one second in the lead. Initial spirit R split. Rixian deserves a gold, I swear. He, like, yeah. He Rixian is everywhere. Rixian deserves so much. Honestly, <laughs> we we will have to think as a community what we can do to thank this water, absolute lad. Water, water gets got one first spit. Spit, right? You do got yeah. a second spit, so not too much That's of a time manageable. difference there. Yeah. Every spit is like roughly an additional second, slightly less, so it's not the end of the world. Yes, and it looks like we have a question from chat about Herm and Rhino Feeder was one aspect of commentary you find the most stressful. I can personally say that as a non-speedrunner, um, the most stressful thing for me was initially learning the run, and it still is sometimes, simply because like I used to practice in the shower instead of singing, <laughs> I would commentate um, nice. given situations. And so that's it for me, but yeah, they're, they're 0 0.09 seconds apart exiting mount. That's plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, the, the hardest thing is when when both runners are in the middle of doing something interesting and exciting. Uh, I mean, I'm only one person. I, I can't, even yeah. with two of us, we can't talk about both things at the same time. So <laughs> it'd be kind of annoying. Yeah, like I have to pick and choose, okay, which thing do I want to highlight right now? And it can be difficult. Um, but on that yeah. same token, if, if, if they're both like in the same area, I can get really, really hyped talking about um, the tiny differences that are going on, like if they're in the same boss fight or something. So. Yeah. Either yeah. Way. Oh, oh, both oh. runners missing. <laughs> that was that was such that was such a roller coaster. Oh. So both runners did the off-screen kill that we do in one two two one for the elder yeah. baller. Um, and water really cleanly missing that. It was clear that he missed that first fireball skip, but yeah. Edu going for a second fireball and just tripping off that ledge. Yeah. Really just adding just adding insult to injury there because normally yeah. if, normally in that situation you're like, okay, well at least I have the three soul, which makes my soul collection a little bit more comfortable right. going through here, but <laughs> losing that fireball for nothing. Um definitely not what Edu wanted to see. Yeah, and water she's need to take a heal there. Um that's a totally fine thing to do as long as he feels comfortable doing this skip with two fireballs. Some runners like to feel comfy and have three, but hopefully they'll both get it. This is probably like it's 
it's definitely an important skip to get much more so than the first one yeah it seems like yeah. both runners have got it um because otherwise you have to do a rather oh, annoying squid pogo right yeah and i gotta be honest like w water choosing the heal there that kind of signals to me that he might be a little nervous because th they're uh, yeah, he's going to go back here and get enough soul to do the fireball skip, but there isn't really a ton in green path that can hit us right. in an unplanned way. So to me, that, that tells me he might be a little bit nervous here. Yeah, and I mean, in the end, a death in green path is absolutely detrimental, but the truth of the matter is that heading into green path, heading towards the hornet fight, there's, yeah, Rhino's absolutely right, there's not too much that's going to pose an act of danger to your health bar. Yeah, especially for runners at this level, you know, they're, they're both experienced runners. There's really, I mean, uh, unless, I, I, I can't think of a place where you would take damage in a very unplanned way. Maybe to the Moss Knights, I could see. Yeah, I feel like all skills Moss Knights in certain patterns can really wombo you, but also with experience and nice double for you there. Um, yeah, they both got doubles, I think, yeah. Oh, that's hype. Yeah, with experience, it's not a huge concern. Right. Yeah, both runners very, very even here. Um, I think edu has got like a couple second lead, I think. Yeah, for sure. And so they're going to be heading into those Moss Knights we just talked oh. about. Um, Edu choosing to head up by VK. I mean, with full soul, I, I guess that's an option. Um, I was worried his any percent note. muscle memory was kicking. Yeah, I was worried we were going to see a VK kill, and I was like, yeah. Edu, please no. Um, but oh, no, really nice RNG. movement there. Yeah. Yeah. So if you get the if that moss knight spawns on top of you, um, normally if, if both knights are on screen, you can just shoot three fireballs and kill them right away. Um, otherwise we have to wait a little bit. And Edu did a really good job. If you jump into the knight's face a little bit and just kind of bother it, it'll actually jump. The, the AI of the game tells it to jump backwards. Um, and yeah. Edu used that really well to manipulate the Moss Knight away from him and get some space to get the Geo Rocks without getting hit. That's that's a lot more tricky than it looks. Yeah, really heads up play there. Um, and we're going to see both runners go into Hornet, as Rixian would say, resolving the family troubles. Um, this is a fight where <laughs> you really want to um, get that get that nice damage rotation, bully her into a corner, take advantage of that low stagger value. Um, and just hopefully even get a few doubles in if you can. Um, it's this sort of thing where Hornet can really jump around. Oh, the sink on that kill. The sink um, on that kill, yeah. Seemed like a pretty with easy about fight from four or him. five seconds, I think. Yeah, five looks like. We'll That's see from, nice. from Rixian in a moment here. Yeah, really well done. E Edu during that fight unfortunately got the um, the glitch with Hornet where if you stagger her back into a wall when her back's already at a wall, um, in future staggers, she doesn't move backwards, making it impossible to get doubles. It's very easy to yeah. mitigate the runners, but it's it's definitely annoying. Yeah, it's just one of those unfortunate things. It's sort of a Team Cherry arrive with spaghetti or TC Chow <laughs> moment, um, where just the coding of the game can interfere with our ability to go zoom zoom a little bit. But it's no worry for the runners because Hornet is dead for the first time, um, and we're heading into the, for the first thing. time. Yeah, and the Mantis Claw here, um, a really, a really tricky split on it. There, there's quite a few difficult skips in the, and and just overall general difficult movement in this segment. And it's it's very early on. It's definitely one of a lot of runners, including mine, fa uh, favorite early game split, just because it's not boring at all. There's a lot, like I said, a lot of interesting movements, um, and there's not really a lot of RNG that can mess us up. This is very much a split that we decide our own fate for. Yeah, this is one of those things, I mean, we're going to see coming up here, the explosion pogo, that is uh, the face that sailed a billion setups. Um, there are so many different ways to do e-pogo, uh, from this simple classic e-pogo, to low percent e-pogo, to wee pogo. There's just many, many different things. Um, At this point, and our community could probably write a book on all the different e-pogos. Oh, for sure. I expect a novel <laughs> release in 2022. Yeah. Uh. We'll say hi to Cloth. Unfortunately, I don't think either of these runners will have the PC crash that Nate did round two that caused oh, him geez. to say hi to Cloth. That was um, funny. But yeah, for now we're just heading down. Um, it's it's really interesting to have movement with Dash, but not with Cloth because we can slide down walls without gripping them. Um, yeah, definitely. 
and then we'll grab this geo and head head into the e-poker room so we'll see what setup both of these runners choose um yeah. as well as whether or not they can get it first try you do taking a hit there very uncommon yeah we'll see we'll see what e-pogo they all go for i would imagine like the standard setup especially in a tournament Oh, Edu going for Weepogo. Very well yeah, done. Yeah, there's Weepogo. And, water and get the first try. <laughs> yeah, water misses. That is a so, really true thing about speedrunning, is that in the end, it's most important... Oh, Fury Strats. That you use whatever strat is best for you. Um, yeah. Because if you can nail it first try, even if it's not standard, um, then that's what matters in the end. Yeah, uh... <laughs> I, I I had actually practiced Wii Pogo a bit, and then literally in my last race, at when I got there, I was like, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> and water, okay, he gets the backup, but I mean, definitely losing time to Edu here, who got the the double Pogo on his first try, had a really really clean section. And this yeah. is really the first this is the first part of the run here where we're seeing a big difference from the runners, um, letting Edu get quite a bit of a time lead there early on. Yeah, just to answer the question from chat, um, the E in Epogo is explosion. Oh, I got snailed by chat. Yeah, um, you got snailed. But <laughs> I got snailed. Um, but yeah, I think that, that Water had a bit of a jinkies moment with that Mantis Pogo, um, which is most unfortunate, but in the end, this Mantis is going to really bully you, and hopefully he'll be able to just keep powering on. We're going to be heading into the Shaman Stone split, um, jokingly dubbed by some to be VS2, um, and it seems yeah. that According to Rixian, oh, Rixian actually keeping track of time related to the Mantis Pogo. The runners are now 22 seconds apart. 17 seconds is the change in that gap, but wow. seven of those seconds were to Mantis Pogo. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, Mantis Pogo is definitely, it's one of those things where if this were like, you know, if water were just going for PB at times, that would probably be just be a reset, but we're for in a sure. race setting and you know we, we we talked a bit earlier herm about the mentality that goes into into racing and how it's honestly a lot different than pb attempts which is why we see a lot of runners that um you know might have insane pbs and be high on the leaderboards not necessarily performing the best in tournaments and vice versa too it's a very different mentality yeah absolutely i mean that's the thing is it a lot of it too in a race setting is mental because you have to be able to adapt to the fact that you can't put that you can't just push that reset button when things start going wrong and right. things can go really wrong with deaths having happened at pretty much every point in this run throughout the tournament um and so you just have to be ready and you're doing those those gross mother pogos very real sorry. nice yeah um, that was real nice yeah for sure Yeah, and well, I'll do the cleanup. Getting the pogos there kind of uh, prevents what we just saw happen with water. Uh, really good cleanup for me, too. But yeah, if, yeah. if Grusma's mother starts heading upwards, um, it's very, very difficult to to get a quick kill without pogoing. So, really heads up play from you, do. Let's see what kind of cleanup water yeah. gets here. Uh, I think he missed it. Yeah, he missed two. Missed two. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but definitely could be worse. Um, the Grusma's mother cleanup is just one of those things where it can go. All sorts of shades of good and bad. Um, but Edu will grab that Shaman Stone and go to take an intentional death um, as part of our shade skip to the blue lake. This is something you see in a lot of main board categories. Um, but yeah, here, after taking this death, Edu's just gonna do a little pogo on the shade. Hopefully he doesn't get a fireball. 20% uh, chance of that, which is just super annoying. Um, oh, yeah, and we'll just make it to right side. Getting a fireball is one of the most tilting things here. It's a lot of time loss, and if you're already in your jump, and it's and the shade gives you a fireball, there's a chance that you can oh. pogo it, but be too far away. So then you have to go <laughs> all, you have to kill yourself all over again and set it all up, and that's just crazy time loss. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing is missing shade skip. Um, oh. Yep. Speaking of that fireball, there's <laughs> there it is from water, but thankfully is able to recover it. As I was saying, missing shade skip can just be infuriating because you have to sit. Through killing your character all over again, um, yeah. but thankfully Water, despite the annoyance of that fireball, is able to save it and head into blue lane. Yeah, wa Water's actually lucky there that he didn't. Oh, that was. Did, did you do just get a? You just get a wall cling sword. Whatever. If somebody wants to clip that, <laughs> they can. But uh, yeah, Water's actually lucky he didn't hit the shade when it fireballed there, because it can be exactly what I just said, where you 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 you've committed, you hit the shade, but oops, it's too far away because it stopped the fireball, and now you've killed your shade and you don't make the the skip. So it, yeah. it's, it's almost better to not hit it. 
Unfortunately, this is not one of those cursed uh, meme categories like All Stag Stations or NMG, NMG being yeah. Nail Master's Glory, um, where you pogo a shade fireball because that is somehow a pogoable object. Yeah, you really just don't want to see it. But thankfully, both runners are on right side. We're sort of going to be grabbing whatever geo we can from the bourgeoisie here, um, and because we need to get we need to get scammed by Nail Master Oro very early in one two two one all skills. Um, for 800 Geo, the high, high cost of 800 Geo, we can skip through a lot of levers in Soul Sanctum, among other things. And so it we really need to get all the Geo we can. It is such a scam. It's Neither of the other Nail Masters mm -hmm. charge you. They just give you services. I mean, heck, Geo is retired and doesn't even have any interest in teaching Nail Arts. <laughs> and he still teaches you his for free. So it is clearly know, right? a scam. But we will go beat up the gorgeous husk who is not gorgeous, but I'll, I'll quote Rixian from the last race and say, well, if I can get 420 Geo, I'll call it gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people, I, I don't know what most people call it, but I, I, I hear a lot of people call it things other than gorgeous husk. It's gorgeous husk. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I, I hear some people call it golden husk. I'm like, nope, it's gorgeous husk. No, it is, it is technically gorgeous husk, but mm. I just think husk. Because it is empty, except for money. And then when you That's take true. away all its money, it is nothing at all. It has no person. Wow. I've also heard Gucci husk before. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous yeah. husk, a confirmed member of the Gucci gang. The Gucci. There we go. Most runners quit out back to that bench they took at King Station. Um, and they're going to be heading into the Kingdom's Edge to grab that scammy nail art we talked about. Um, let's see how they're both doing on Geo. Edo at 714, that's just fine. Yeah. Um, water Bloody. is at, oh, waiting for that load, 726. That's a lot more comfy. But we're going to be farming some Geo from Hoppers here. Um, the first row is pretty chill, but after that we do have to deal with some Primal Aspids sort of watching us. Uh, but the runner should be able to avoid this with practice and skill. Really good movement here from both right. Getting Quickly getting under that um, little bit of water there, and, um, coming out of the bottom of uh, City there. It's a lot trickier than it looks to squeeze a dash in between there without getting caught in the water. I think both runners got it. Um, yeah, the, the other thing too is we need 800 Geo now, um, but very soon in the future we're going to need 300 more Geo to open up King Station. So that's why you, you'll see most runners, even once they get 800 Geo, they'll just finish killing all the hoppers. Um, cause yeah. hoppers are an incredibly efficient way to farm Geo. So while we're here farming Geo anyway, we may as well get started on the next, um, part of the run where we need Geo. Yeah. I mean, for anybody unfamiliar, for anybody familiar with the all unbreakable charms run in which you need 36,000 Geo, you spend about an yeah. hour farming hoppers in this exact room just because of how efficient <laughs> it is. So it's yeah. really, really convenient. Um, and we're able to get through them with our fireball. And so, yeah, you'll see both of them have slightly over 800 geo which is just about where you want to be um yeah a little lower than i would like i i would like to be a little closer to 820 830 here but i mean you're you're, yeah. you're fine here you can you know there's there's places on the way to sanctum and out of sanctum we can farm more geo so it's not it's not the end of the world but it's a little less comfortable than i would like to be here yeah for sure i mean especially on Nidu's side with only five geo um at this point i mean we're going to get a pretty significant amount from killing the soul warrior and from um killing the soul the soul twister into sanctum if you choose to pick up that juice so it's like it's gonna happen but also rhino is absolutely right it's just sort of it's a little bit more comfortable to exit kingdom's edge with closer to 2030 geo yeah definitely and then fortunately though after king station that's kind of the end of like the planned geo routing for the like the rest of the geo just comes very easily and naturally yeah, we'll be picking up 655 Geo ish from the Watcher Knights chest, and that's basically going to sate us for the rest of the run after we're done with right. the station stag. And so, yeah, this category is kind of funny in that in the first portion of the run, Geo farming is very tight, very managed. It's really important that you're keeping track of how much you have, and then after that, it's just mm -hmm. kind of like whatever. Yeah, which was such an interesting contrast for me because, you know, coming from any percent, you pretty much, like, Geo is tight all the way to the end, which is which is a good thing, right? right. Like, it's a sign of optimized routing, but definitely is something we have to think about. Both runners yeah. get Inspire Skip pretty cleanly, too. Let's see how they do in the dark room. Edu threw it real quick. Water. Water having a bit of an okay. issue, but is able to get out. Yeah, that, yeah, that hit, that little flash of light is Water using his nail to sort of figure out where he is in that room because it hasn't loaded in. Um... Mm -hmm. 
but is thankfully able to find his way. And to answer the question from chat, um, like what part of the run do you see the most variance or most scope for error in? I think it really depends on what a runner's yeah. strengths and weaknesses are. Like going into the split, for example, the desolate dive split, which will happen after we pick up our Shade Soul. Um, Edu has comm sub in that, but also right. Soul Sanctum is super RNG heavy. So even though Edu is very, very skilled at it, um, it can also just bully you. There's a lot of opportunity for the game to bully you. There's a lot of opportunity for you to bully yourself. Like if you're just unable to get certain skips or you just really struggle with a boss fight such as Hornet mm -hmm. 2, um, there's a lot of room for variance. I, I would say just as a general rule of thumb, uh, water choosing not to get that Geo though, that was very- Interesting. Oh, well, that's, a, that's a questionable like choice in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would agree. That's questionable. Um, but anyway, what, what I was going to say, um, in, as a general rule of thumb, I think segments that are more movement heavy have less variance than any segment with a boss fight. Just by Super the nature varied. of boss fight. Yeah, just there, there's RNG in the pattern that we get from bosses that we have no control over. Um, I mean, it depends on the boss fight too. Like, but e even a fight like Watcher Knight, right? Which is a very, very quick fight in this category. All it takes is one of the knights to decide that, hey, I'm going to roll all the way across the room from you. And just right. like that, there, there goes like six seconds. You know, it's no. So. I found I found yesterday a diagram in which Homophony mopped, mapped out all of the THK patterns, and it is so variant that it's essentially a brand new fight every time. Yeah. Um, it is that that different, and so these runners really do have to think on their feet. Um, and I mean, thankfully, for example, as you can see, they just picked up Shade Soul. That's our upgraded Vengeful Spirit. You're gonna watch from Edu and Water here momentarily. It allows us to do a Jeez. whole bunch of damage, especially with double hits. A double hit Shade Soul does 80 damage. Um, which is pretty Ooh, bonkers, but you do really taking a lot of damage, probably yeah, that's, that's not, not great, great. Um, I think, going into Sanctum. So he, you can see, uh, he he really, I could tell by the way he was doing that fight, he really did not want to shoot that fireball. He really wanted yeah. to like, finish off with the nail and do a heal, because you can just, I mean, he could die here, right? Like, yeah, there's right. one hit, here yeah, RNG. There's and... one hit. Yeah, those things can teleport directly into your face, you have no choice about it. Um, it's really not in your control, but you do makes it out yeah. alive. No, which is he's not dashing either. And like a lot of places that we normally would dash there, he walks, which is the smart choice here. Right. Um, yeah, gonna heal up. Definitely the smart because move. Because the last thing you want is to be in the middle of that that quick directional motion, and then boom, a teleported soul twister, yeah. and that's the end. That's that's the end of your lead. Um, which, by the way, according to Rixian's timestamps, they're 24 seconds apart. Um, the gap only widened by one second there, though. So. It I mean, it's still not the most. Um, that was not the most close. That was a questionable decision from Edu. That like, was he, interesting. So we I, used I, know those soul I know why he did it. Yeah, he, he, he shot the fireball because he wanted to break the jars off screen. But it, it, I don't. If, I mean, if if he knew he was going to do that, I would have just broken them all with my nail as I came into the fight. But yeah, you know, I absolutely agree. Because in my opinion, wasting soul to get soul, not the yeah. best choice when you can just get soul for free. Water um, had a really good first segment though. Here. Yeah, that was that was an awesome uh, first cycle, cycle first first phase soul master. Um, now we'll go into the fake out phase, um, which these runners very much know it is coming, unlike the average casual player. But yeah, this is this is a phase where soul master only has a hundred hit points, so it's really no big deal. Um, we're just gonna hit him with the nail to get soul, and then once he starts shooting. Soul orbs at us. Really nice him. from water. Water. water yeah, that really was an water. awesome soul master fight. You do getting bullied here. Oh my. Yeah. Holy cow. Jeez. Holy cow. Okay. Okay. So, water probably made up quite a bit of time there. He had a really clean segment, and you do got bullied by RNG and all sorts of other stuff. But yeah, and now he's absolutely. gonna have to leave Sanctum. I mean, he's gonna have to either take another five seconds and heal here, or try and risk leaving Sanctum with one HP. Yeah. I mean, I really don't think that. If you're Edu, in order to keep this, I mean, you in the end, even if you've lost a ton of time, um, you certainly just want to keep keep at it. I think you just have to take a heal here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which is what we see him do. It's just too much of a risk with the way Soul Sanctum goes. No, in a PB attempt, I would probably just one HP, and if I die, then yeah. oh well, I die. But in a race, there's no way I leave there with one HP. Yeah, absolutely not. And you have not enough soul to do these dives here. And there, are, soul sanctum is a soul rich area, so it's not right. exactly too much of a worry getting that back. But according to Rixian, yeah, it seems water made up eleven seconds in that split. So they're wow. now only um, 
13 seconds apart. So yeah, that just shows really clean play by water and just some some real issues, some RNG bullying for Edu, as well as a tough fight against that Soul Warrior um, yeah. swinging things around. And another thing I'm noticing now, Herm, too, is if you look at the Geo, Edu's really low on Geo leaving here. Oh, um, yeah. Like, Which is I, funny I, I, because oh, they gosh. were... Sorry, water. Oh, <laughs> elevators. <laughs> Elevators are a number one enemy in the game. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> number one enemy. But yeah, Edu's gonna have to. You know, he's gonna have to go out of it. Th that is enough of a geo loss where he's gonna have to slightly go out of his way to make that up. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's really interesting because I do remember that entering the Sanctum split, uh, there were only one geo apart because Water specifically chose to not grab that geo um from the the soul twister. And so yeah, it's interesting that that Water was able to just grab thirty extra geo heading out um and then yeah, make this farming a whole lot either. easier i didn't see where he got the 30 extra geo I just, yeah I must chat not if any of you are that. aware of where that geo farming happened um definitely let us know because i'm i'm interested i didn't catch it did myself. he kill a soul twister maybe because that's that's actually fairly that's common. 25 so oh 25 yeah. yeah that could be about it then yeah I... from mistakes because edu was kind of running away from all the mistakes he may have farmed a mistake or two for soul and then that would mm. that would get him yeah that would make sense yeah, because I, I know even some for, for me, if, if the Soul Twister teleports in front of me sometimes, I just fireball him immediately because I don't want to deal with him attacking me or being in my way. And, yeah, um, absolutely. It's, it's e e the, the, the quote's time loss is fairly easily justified by the extra Geo we need anyway. So I, I, right. I, if I had to guess, that's probably what happened with Water. Yeah, and you can see the contrast here at this just, fire bench. Water's got 283 and will decide to get this cowardly husk, it seems. Um, yeah, it needs to get Soul for the dive floor. Um, 283 to 255, that is a big difference because water can just sort of run right over here, grab Geo from these husks, and boom, 302. That's all you need for King Station, whereas Edu has yeah. to do a lot more cleanup work. Yeah, and for what it's worth, too, um, I gotta be, if I were water, I may have just not broken the floor and gone down the right elevator shaft there. Because at that point, he didn't need a lot of Geo, and those two husks that we just saw him hop over, you can kill those for, if he didn't need enough Geo, but... Yeah, I Either mean, way. it also depends as to whether or not he brought the elevator down, because I know um, in the last race, somebody, I believe Jeff had so much Geo, he had a crazy amount of Geo at King mm -hmm. Station, um, and just was able to take the elevator down because he forgot to bring it down going up to Spire. Oh, so that was convenient, but if you have to wait for the elevator, obviously better to just break that floor. Um, yeah, but yeah, absolutely. both will get the, will get the stag. Um, and we're stagging to Dirtmouth here. We don't get Crossroads Stag in 1221. Um, so we're going to be heading to Dirtmouth, heading past our lovely friend Mila, who deserves life in all circumstances, um, <laughs> and into Crystal Peak. Yeah. So Rixie and getting us about a 16 second difference. Yes. I mean, this is such a close race. Like, this is yeah. 16 seconds is not at all. I mean, that that's it's, it's barely worth mentioning as a major difference, honestly, at this right. point in the run especially with there's so much i mean the thing is like truly truly the best is yet to come um oh yeah we're not even halfway through this race going into crystal peaks and that's the thing is that this peak split is one that i find i mean either specifically mentioned to me that he tends to struggle in peaks so we can see but it's one that i find mm. that consistency is so key because pretty much all of the rooms in peaks um are cycled in some form and it's mm. all about just staying on cycle because if you get knocked off cycle, you end up waiting, which is a speedrunner's least favorite action. And it's oh, just yeah. frustrating. You don't want to wait around for lasers or different things to, to happen. You want to do this on your own dime. And so, right. yeah, hopefully both runners can get through. Well, and on that note, too, one interesting thing is, you know, a lot of people coming from any percent, if there are lasers in our way, we just damage tank them and go through because in any percent after we pick up Crystal Heart, it's a save and quit out. Right. Anyway. So we don't care about our health at all. But here, I mean, <laughs> after we pick up Crystal Heart, there's you know there, there's a there's dark a room we have to go through. The Crusher cycles, the crystallized mound, a lot of things can go wrong. So health management becomes a much more serious concern in a split like all skills. Yeah, this is pretty much the number one split for our health management because first of all, mm -hmm. if you want to go for that damage tank cycle on Crystal Heart, which takes about four seconds, you need to tank damage, obviously, it's in mm -hmm. the name. Um, but also, <laughs> the really important yeah. one is the D-Dark early control, so when we get into Crystallized Mound, um, everybody is going to want to tank damage. Uh, to get early control out of Descending Dark using our Dash Slash, which saves about 15 seconds, so it's really annoying if you can't do that. And it's just mm -hmm. hard to get soul in peaks because most enemies 
are covered in some sort of shell that prevents you from hitting them easily. Um, Side note, neither runner went for Pogax, and I am very disappointed. Unfortunate. Unbelievable. Unreal. Unreal. This <laughs> removed from reality. No problem. Yeah. And Edu, he looked... Oh, okay. He, he, yeah. So, the, the, the funny thing... I don't think a lot of people know this about God Cycle and God Pixel, but it is RNG. Like, the laser... The, the enemies will start their, quote, laser cycle when you get close enough. But there's still like a one to two second variance and when they actually start oh, shooting their lasers. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I, I don't know if a lot of people knew that. that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I yeah, think so it's like, I think it's definitely a common misconception because everybody's like, oh, it's it's God cycle. Like if you're a god and you're really, really good at it, um, then you must always yeah. get it. But now to be clear, you do have to be very fast, but there is an RNG course. element for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, so, I just don't think a lot of people know that. It's it's not one hundred percent on your own movement there. Yeah. Let's that's, see. that's very interesting, but we'll see both runners going to Crystal Heart. First of all, thank you to chat. All of you are exceedingly cute. I most appreciate all the compliments. <laughs> um, but yeah, heading into Crystal Heart, we use that dash slash as an air stall. Um, and we'll see what damage cycle. Tank. Yeah, damage tank yeah. cycle. So this is Ooh, no, oh, that's not good. already off cycle. That is no yeah. good. That is the last thing you want to see, because in the end, even if you mess up on the damage list cycle, um, which you can easily get wamboed. Um, going for under under on two mass, you respect it. Gets the soul. Wise choice. Hey, Probably will take a so heal here. But this is how you know Water's a man of the people, okay? He if he was gonna go for the soul totem, it's objectively faster to not do to under go plat. over plat. Yeah. He wanted to give it to the crowd. He he knew that we needed this in this time of need. He gave us the under. It was very important. I can tell you from experience as well. <laughs> in the last race I commentated for Water, he went for under plat on one mass. Um, it was impressive. It was what the audience needed to see. Um, yeah. This man is a true lad, and you love to see it. Absolutely. Looks like they're about 23 seconds about apart at Crystal Heart. Um, Edu did widen that gap by by seven seconds. So it seems that despite his his proclaimed struggles with the area, Edu's having a pretty good peak so far. We're gonna have to see how this D Dark split goes. Um, got water accidentally dashing in there. Um, this is another very cycled room. Yeah, well done. Yeah, he, he he got a little off cycle there, but he made up for it. I'm curious to see if either runner goes through the cool um, backwards wall queen storage here. Yeah. He up see. and Edu went for it and hit the the, the wall, unfortunately. Unfortunate. But I appreciate but, the effort. Exactly. And both runners saving the grub, which you really do love to see. They're going to be heading into this dark room now. Um, dark rooms are sort of a unique aspect of, oh, unfortunately, Ooh, you no, hit there will reset know, the room. I was just going to say, too, Edu's going to make up some time here going for the <laughs> optimal strat, but, well. <laughs> yeah, you can't blame me for the comms room. curse. I never even said it. <laughs> yep, it was, it was, it was thought, thought police is going to be on you um, for your, your thought crimes. But, yeah, yeah Water are doing the C-Dash Dark Room, which is significantly slower, but also, in general, generally a lot safer. Um, Much safer, yeah. But yeah, we have to do these dark rooms because we don't buy lantern in this category. It is a huge save of geo and one of the main reasons why we don't have to worry as much about geo routing um, later. And that's because we're also picking up dive to go into peaks so we don't need lantern to get there. Um, but yeah, it is, we'll see in dark deep nest things get even more serious, but thankfully you are able to make it through. Hopefully it doesn't take any more damage here that would prevent right. him from doing the early control. Neither runner went for the um, the swag crystal pogo that saves like two to three seconds, but understandable. It's, yeah, it's fairly especially risky. Especially for Edu on two masks. Yeah, but all absolutely. good. Able to get that early control. One mask is all you need because after this, we're flying straight into the dream cut scene where our health is no matter, and after that, we're quitting out. Yeah, like it. it... You literally can't get like if you if you were just like angry at the game and wanted to die and reset. Like there's actually no place you can take damage here. <laughs> like you really yeah. cannot. Yeah. Like you could try, but you would not succeed. Um, yeah, even yeah. if you're like, I want to do a shade skip. That's actually a big problem in the randomizer community is people want to shade skip places, but they just can't Ooh, feasibly I'm, die. Hang on, I'm so. really worried that water just interacted with the statue on the same frame he landed. Please don't soft lock. Oh, no. Okay, oh, god, I. Oh, okay, okay. We're good. yeah, that soft lock can be oh, my infuriating. God, that, <laughs> that would have just. Oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, I I had a mini heart attack because I've I've. I've had yeah. that happen to me. I've seen it happen to others. That was <laughs> my, yeah, my heart had stopped a really my chest for a second. With that soft lock, so <laughs> yeah, you do hate to see it. But 
yeah. water having enough to do that dive um and we'll head into the dream platforming thankfully soft lock free um we yeah. get to see that for most of this which is nice as well as do a second under plat yeah that's right under plat too um we're gonna yeah we'll see we'll see if water goes for it here yeah. I never know whose audio to use in times like this because like RTA water is ahead, but in game time, you like like technically for the race, Edu is ahead. So I'm just gonna stick with water as. Yeah, I would I would just say stick with water because in the end, yeah. nobody wants to hear the exact same sounds twice, and so, right. and since it's close enough, it's not like wow, like Edu is so yeah. definitively ahead. You know, exactly. uh, still about thirty seconds apart. So. Yeah, and important to note that nothing massive in the in the change of paces here, but Edu did eke out a couple seconds over water during that segment. Um, yeah. So now really heading over to Watcher. Really good all around, despite him saying it was oh, a yeah. struggle segment for him. Yeah, it's got to be. He, he's probably letting out a deep exhale now, knowing that yeah. section's over. He made it through <laughs> without dying. It's all good. Exactly. And so we're going to be heading into Watcher Nights. Um, this fight in all skills has significantly more damage than the ones in any percent and low percent yeah. as i'm sure rhino can attest to um yeah absolutely i mean i don't i don't know any top any percent runners that haven't spent countless hours practicing this fight in any percent because it's just absolutely. that important where is in all skills like the <laughs> the fight's almost more of like an afterthought i mean there's very consistent ways to kill the watch knights incredibly quickly um yeah, yeah we're, we're just gonna spend that that beautiful spell we just picked up descending dark um, it's just gonna be spam, spam, spam. Yeah, the these folks will die in two and three quarters descending darks. The only time where this can really get um, out of hand is where you're sort of dancing around with those invincibility frames and you end up getting into some damage tanks because to kill them optimally sometimes means dancing with death a little bit. But water's getting good RNG. Ooh, it, um, nope, never mind. Not anymore, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That well, and that's what we were talking about earlier, is that the knights can just decide to roll. To roll <laughs> now the RNG is terrible. Yeah, I've cursed it so much. Wow, that was funny. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. So definitely... Yeah, jinkies. Giving Edu a chance to make up some time here. Well, to gain more time here on water. Yeah, extend that lead. Um, yeah, definitely yeah. not the fight water would have wanted there. But no, he makes it through really fine. unfortunate. That's the thing is that Watcher Knights, as we've remarked on, can just really get out of hand. They can get ugly in a lot of different oh, ways. Oh, either. Or you can just yeah. Ooh, as, gee, yeah. As I've the, the number of times I've seen runners, Gosh. even very experienced runners, finish this fight on one mask is very high. Simply because yeah. in order to get optimally, you need to get right up in the Watcher's face. You need to make sure mm -hmm. that your dark is dealing all ADA damage, and like you don't want to miss. So, yeah, it's super important here. Um, you know, again, we're, we're speedrunners. Time save over everything. So right. damage tanking is going to be a part of the strategy sometimes. But thankfully, that one mask is not a huge concern. Um, Dreamer yeah. cutscenes are a health refresh, as you can just see on water screen. So we're going to go beat up Lurian, who I always found to be kind of the weakest Dreamer. A little weird that he just sort of watches everyone all the time. And doesn't yeah, he just do got anything. like a telescope sitting up in the tower staring at people. Weirdo. Yeah, a little bit <laughs> odd. So we're going to get rid of him. Um, and then we're gonna go do some really difficult skips. Yeah, yeah. If there's, if this, this would probably be the next big place in the run that we could see like a major shift in the lead or time lot. I mean, it. I would expect both of these runners to have a fairly clean set of Isma skips here, but anything could happen. I mean, I, I've right, seen exactly. super, super, super high level. I mean, we saw Monster yesterday mess up Spike Pogo. I mean, anything could happen. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Is like different different runners um have different strengths in this spike tunnel is one of those things it's funny most of the time people will will dunk on current patch for not having lever skips for not being able to do a lot of the tricks that you can do in 1221 but one thing that is easier on current patch is the spike tunnel because the spike tunnel is very precise on 1221 and with a lot of practice you can get it consistently but it's a struggle no matter what oh it looks like we just got a raid too from speed gaming 4 so welcome to anyone coming in this is a Hollow Knight race. We're about halfway through. Two very good runners here, heading into some very difficult skips. Should be a good time. Absolutely. And so, yeah, Water having already broken that floor because he didn't take the elevator yeah, down. It's right. the same for Edu. Um, so that is <laughs> convenience. We, we had to ask Jeff in his interview last run, like, did you know you needed to break the floor the second time? Um, 
because it's very common to break it. But yeah, we're going to be heading down, fall through this room, but we're not going to basin just yet. We're going to stop at this spike tunnel. And the reason we do this is because it lets us skip a whole bunch. Oh, very good spike well, tunnel. Well, very there. clean. Got it. Right, cling onto the wall, didn't even have to step down or anything, just optimal yeah. stuff right there. We'll and go that really puts the pressure on Edu now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, oh, and he, there, oh, there already. Makes a hit. And that's and that's an extra annoying hit, especially because and water getting the yeah. second acid skip first try, the first acid yeah. skip. What am I talking about? Second skip, first try. We'll go for this second acid skip as Edu gets the spike tunnel after that dunk, but really, really oh. well. <laughs> no, I was gonna say really, really clean Isma's. Unfortunately, did fall there, but that's really not a scary fall to take in the least, he... simply because we already oh, have. Really yeah. That probably didn't really lose water that much time, honestly, because of the no, worm really. damage. Yeah, that that was probably like the most fortunate place you could take damage, honestly. Yeah, I was unfortunate that it happened, but fortunate in the way that it occurred. Oh. Um, e is Edu going to try and do it? Control for Edu. Is Edu going to try to get the UI? Now let's go! He got oh, it. let's go. This is this is a very fun glitch um, that Rhino likes to display in his yeah. races. Um, <laughs> if you if you get out of Isma's with early control before the pop up disappears, you'll have a green trail uh, following you until you next um, save and quit, I believe. And so it's really cool looking. Water gets the perfect Rava RNG there, it's able to C dash all the way across. Let's see if yeah, very nice. Lucky. And it looks like they're still about thirty seconds apart. Um, 33 Even seconds water. apart, water making up one second during that time, because in the end, water skips were good, really good, but Edu also had a very solid set of skips as well, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, I had still... a little trouble there in the, um, in the, the spike pogo, but it, it, it didn't seem to make too much of a difference here. Yeah, I mean, once, once Edu got to the actual spike tunnel, he got it first try, so I think it's probably, that, that unfortunate dunk is probably equivalent to water's dunk after the second acid skip um to a degree but they'll both be buying this toll bench we're going to be quitting out there after we finish fighting the broken vessel they'll run away from it because <laughs> in game time manipulation um and yeah we're going to be heading into the mallark little mallark spit section as we hike over to bb yeah and this, this section is very interesting because it looks very um it, it, it looks like runners just get very lucky dodging a lot of the infection bubbles that the mallarks are shooting but there's a very consistent and specific way you can move through this room to more or less guarantee that you don't get any more than one or two hits. Um, I'm interested to see water here. So this C dash, the te there's two ways runners go through this. Okay, and I like that approach in a tournament setting. Yeah, the, the, I like the that optimal too. way there is actually to intentionally take damage. Like if you're just purely going for speed, but totally oh, respect the tournament. Hit there. Yeah, <laughs> in a tournament <laughs> setting, I totally respect just playing it safe there and not taking damage. Yeah, and that was that was a really a pretty solid Moloch um, mm -hmm. trip there, simply because, yeah, BV is another one of those bosses where, like, it only has 525 hit points. It's not one of those things that's going to, like, really get you. But also, if you, Ooh, if you start try. running out of soul during the headbang, all those things, yeah, nice space to get from you there. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a lot of deaths from runners to Broken Vessel, unfortunately, just because of how yeah. things can get out of hand. I think a lot of runners almost um, take it for granted that like, oh, you know, bro it's Broken Vessel, it's an easy boss fight, but if you're yeah. not careful, I, I have totally died to Broken Vessel in runs before, I mean, just... It, it, <laughs> yeah. It and like happen, that headbang you know? attack, it's great, it's super, it's super great for, for loading, loading and damage, but if you're out of soul, um, and you just have you to sort of go up there, yeah, exactly like you can see you should be okay. here, but yeah, it gets out of it just fine. Way, way to, way to stick with it, you do, um, yeah. and just be able to be, keep it together. You know, that's the thing. Is like, I almost feel like Team Cherry knew that the psychological effect of the barrier around your yeah. character <laughs> being on one mask, like, that has such a profound oh effect, and you just need to be able to get used to it. You know, well, you need to be able to be like, okay. It's, it's funny you say that too, because like. I, I know I'm not the only runner that does this, but sometimes I'll purposely train, um, like in practice mode, doing boss fights at 1 HP, just so that, like, if it happens in a run, I'm not at all nervous or I, I just don't care. Because one thing that I see a lot of times, and I, I, I'm going to say straight up, I think this is a mistake. If you're on 1 HP in a boss fight, 
keep playing the same way you normally would. Like, don't try and run off to the side and heal. Because nine times out of ten, yeah. you're just going to get hit trying to heal. And all that does, you, you're thrown off your rhythm now. You just wasted three hits of soul trying to heal, and you got hit anyway. So, like, Right, just... exactly. Obviously, easier that's... said than done. <laughs> right, of course. Yeah. And I think, that's, I think that's sort of akin to what you and I talked about prior to this race, Rhino, in that, like, when you're a veteran runner, when you've experienced, when you've practiced for so long, you know every little way that you can mess up. You know what mm -hmm. happens when you end up on one mask. Like, you're just prepared. You have that adaptability. You have that sort of, like, fluid intelligence. Mm -hmm. And, like, that really allows you to adapt. But absolutely, I mean, like, that's the thing is sometimes safety strats are great. Sometimes they're very helpful, especially in a race setting. Um, but sometimes they can end up just, like, contributing to you not doing what you could already do well if you're sort of psyched out. Yeah, um, absolutely. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, in, 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 my exper in my experience, one thing a lot of people that ask me for help with boss fights and the game in general is I often say the safest way to play 99% of the bosses in this game is hyper aggressive. Like, be very aggressive, be close to them, and you're actually safer that way. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I think the number of times that casually I died to bosses, not because that I, I couldn't beat them, not because I didn't understand how to hit them, but because Water's midway low. through the yeah. fight, I ran away. Yeah, water water gets it. Um, but yeah, speaking of bosses, we're going to be coming up on Hornet 2. That's right. She's back. She's yep. better than ever. And by better than ever, we mean <laughs> she's now the most difficult fight in this run. Um, Absolutely. She's learned yeah. some new tricks. She, she saw our dash and said, watch me and now learns to parry our spells, which is infuriating, and also oh, puts up some barbs, which casually are a nightmare, but really are not the biggest deal for us in this fight, uh, because our spells get rid of them so quickly. But yeah, both yeah. of these runners are gonna go for it. They're probably, I mean, Water didn't take the safety bench, I don't think- I would be shocked, either, yeah. Especially given the fact that this race is still somewhat close uh, within 40 seconds, and so, yeah, we're just gonna see how this fight goes. A death to Hornet 2 can be rather, rather detrimental um when a race is this close but also Hornet oh, 2 yeah. can just take a really long time that rng can bully the heck out of you yeah it's it's hornet is definitely i mean i just said that playing bosses aggressive is the safest way to play them and i think hornet 2 is no exception but it does hornet's movement can be a bit erratic and random here um you know she can do some empty hops on us um some like walk directions you might not expect so For it's sure. important to stay close but be very conscious of your spacing here yeah, exactly. And I mean, there's the there's the age-old Hollow Knight joke of the hardest attack is the boss walking or jumping into you. And Hornet yeah. is really exemplary of that, if we're being honest. And water oh, is water, on one please. mask. Um, yeah, getting those parries too. We'll we'll see. I mean, this is this is an excellent gonna example. Heal. Choosing to heal during that stagger is really a wise yeah. choice. And yeah, look, finishes her off. In the end, that's what you want. It is much better to be yeah. able to heal and be safe than to completely mess it up and be stuck back in base and heading all the way over. Um, and so... Absolutely. Yeah, d d during a stagger is like the one exception to the rule I said earlier. Like That's like the one time it's okay to heal is during a stagger. Right. But like, for example, during the Watcher Knights fight, um, if you're healing in a corner, you're just going to get bounced you're gonna into get and then... Yep. Oh, I'm on one mask again and I don't even have the soul to D-Dark out of this. Like... <laughs> Yeah. thing especially when we have a spell that actively gives us invincibility frames um but yeah water is doing the early control out of king's ran as does you do so they're going to be heading back and this is sort of like the downtime sort of chill segment in the run it appears so the runners are about 51 seconds apart um according to rixie and about 10 seconds widening that gap so Idu is continuing to pull a lead but even um, still with umu coming up to, to answer gidge's question real quick in chat we have purposely chosen to use waters um audio because he's ahead of rta and we just thought that would make more sense for viewers but that but was the reason for that if there's like a strong push for folks to have Idu's audio like we yeah. can switch it's not hard at all um yeah. but that was just our thinking yeah, yeah, but we're heading sure. to Cyclone Slash. It's very chill. I I was joking uh, with Hixian earlier, like, if I run Hollow Knight all skills, I'll do Cyclone Slash ILs, and Hixian can do the rest of the run. Um, I'll just right. do the C dash. Water's at 1 HP. Yeah, yeah and it's interesting, because water has the UI glitch that um, sort of eliminates your, your health and soul gauge. Um, but yeah, 
Water's at 1 HP, you can tell by that border, but thankfully we're just going to be stagging to Dirtmouth and benching there because we quit back to Dirtmouth after grabbing um, Yeah, it's a forced bench. Cyclone <laughs> Slash, so. God, I got scared there. Oof. Yeah, those spellflies are no joke. Um, yeah, that spawns you back in Hornet, too. Yeah, exactly. Fun fact about bellflies um, that I learned last night from Bethulu is that one bellfly if you use spore shroom, bellflies can hit you through the floor. Um, it is terrifying. Jeez. And so, yeah, but thankfully, these bellflies are just sort of running at us and we're at full health now. As Virgil would say, KP, people please arrive. Uh, people we request please arrive. people to arrive here. Um, we're just heading back through the tutorial area over to Howling Cliffs. Yeah, it's... Th th like you said, this is a very most runners. This is a, this is a very welcome downtime after you know doing Hornet two and all that intense movements um, and the hardest boss fight in the run. This is a nice little section where we can kind of just not really too much difficult movement here. It's a lot of walking and jumping, um, so definitely a nice time for runners to kind of collect their thoughts, catch their breath. Yeah, uh, even absolutely. having a little bit of trouble with the climb, but not nothing too concerning. Yeah, I do appreciate just as you said, jumping that you do fail to jump up yeah. high enough. That was some good synchronicity with the the commentating. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna sort of say hi to Mato, an excellent example of how a nail master should be, in that he gives us his nail art for free, um, and is nice and is appreciative of us instead of being like Oro, uh, who's all angry and such. I mean, Mato. <laughs> Mato and Oro are canonically in a fight, right? But Mato still knows kindness, so and Oro only knows the right. greed that embodies his trainer Sly spirits. Yeah, he so. he, te he teaches us the nail art just for the love of the art, you know, just yeah, for the love exactly. of spreading the of spreading his knowledge. And so now we're going to be heading back to Dirtmouth, um, and we're going to go down the well and go towards our favorite orange jellyfish, Umu. Mm -hmm. um, this can be a rather painful segment of the run, depending on how things go, simply right. because you can decide that you get an extra attack, um, or you can just sort of fail to get the one cycle um, with the setup of your choosing, and that can be a really annoying time loss on the order of 18 to 19 seconds. Yeah, and I don't know if, Bo I mean, I would assume Edu does, I don't know if water goes for the standard out-of-bounds one cycle. Yeah. But... I am not sure. The thing, I've commentated so many races, it's hard to keep track. Um, but I would guess, based on my recollection, yeah, people in chat saying water does. Thank you so much. Oh, um, yeah. So both of these folks will do the the standard pushing Umu out of bounds, straight soul one cycle. We have sort of recently seen the rise of Volley's um, adaptation of Underline's one cycle involving yeah. descending dark. But that's sort of a new, a trendy new uh, zoomer strat. So... Yeah, I, well, I think we'll it's a see. little bit less consistent. Um, it, I, th I think that the benefit it has is that it's much easier for especially newer runners to understand because you can physically see Umu throughout the entire right. time. Whereas, I mean, even I, I know myself when I was trying to learn the out of bounds one cycle, it was incredibly infuriating to be like, well, I don't know what I messed oh, yeah. up because I, I can't see Umu out of bounds right now. So. It is It is so annoying when yeah. you, I mean, when you get, you think you get the one cycle Umu's yeah. out of bounds, and then you just see Quirrell show up again and be like, Kasa, am I right? And you're like, no, you're wrong, please. <laughs> yeah, fun tip for anybody trying to learn that cycle, though, and th this helped me a ton, go into debug mod and zoom out a lot so you can actually see out of bounds. And then you can actually see what's, like, if you're not getting the one cycle, you can see what went wrong or what you're doing incorrectly. Big pro tip right there. Yeah. Um, see water complete here. amateur lore moment from Herm. I do like to think about the facts. Virgil and I were talking about this. Is that like Quirrell says, um, Kasa, like before you, before he pops Umu open, and like that is the Spanish affirmative two command for hunt. And I just oh, really? really like that as an idea. I don't think that's intentional at all, but I like the idea that Quirrell's commanding us to hunt Umu, like because Hold affirmative two water. commands are basically you got this. But yeah, that's a. That's a good hunt from water. Um, really solid one cycle, good setup and everything. Um, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this is from you. Uh, He's not gonna get it. Yeah, no. Yeah. We didn't get like out of bounds by the cycle. last nail yeah. hit. Oh that was, gosh. That was not great. Um, this is huge for water. Yeah, this is a really, really big tie makeup. This is 18 to 19 seconds. Um, 
With an extra attack. Oh, goodness. With, oh my gosh, and an extra. Oh, that is no. such a jinkies moment for Edu. Really unfortunate. Um, that is, I mean, that easy, is catastrophic. Easy two cycle, but still, I mean, the lead is going to significantly narrow after this. Um, yeah. As water beats up Monomon, science is dead. Huzzah. <laughs> yeah, and for how simple that one cycle can look when done well, um, there's an incredible amount of tiny nuance to very, very specific details of perform executing that one cycle that are kind of hard to notice at times. Like, the, 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 your, your spacing between your character and Umu is so incredibly important in that fight. Um, I think I, whoever raced this morning that missed a one cycle, you know, it was something very small. Like they, they shot their both, third fireball. Both runners did. Yeah, but... I, I think it was zero. Yeah. Like he shot his fire, his third fireball, like a millisecond too early, and it didn't yeah. get the double. Like there's a lot going on there that is hard to tell when Umu's off screen. All right. I mean, it's easy. It's easy to watch these experienced runners nail it and think about how. Um, how easy it is um nice left side exit there yeah very well done but it is so difficult it's so precise and it just it, i mean even some runners who are newer but definitely have respectable pvs haven't even gone for one cycles or just don't learn one cycles for a while um because of how yeah. how difficult and precise it can be and how annoying it is really to sit down and practice umu a fight that can just sometimes feel so out of your control Oh yeah, and I think we were talking about this like in the green room warming up Herm, is that like, you don't really know a run until you know all the ways that things can go wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think Umu exactly. Ooh, and Edu gets oh, the C dash that. glitch. Oh, you hate to see that. <laughs> that's so unfortunate. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, according to Rixie in there, um, Water made up 22 seconds there, which is, I mean, the, 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 it was starting to get away from him a little bit, but this puts him squarely back in contention for the race here. I mean, this is far from over. There's still a lot of difficult sections where things could go wrong. Yeah, I mean that's that's big stuff, and especially I mean, this this great slash split. It's pure movement, pretty low RNG. Um, a, definitely a fan favorite among runners. Um, oh yeah. But I mean, coming up, we've got we've got the Howling Race Arena, which can just be annoying. And even though it's not necessarily a hard segment of the run, it's not really like oh, I'm going to take a debt. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, well, that for was um, just sniped. <laughs> Water has mentioned that it is a noted struggle of his, but also the race arena could just really get up hand. I mean, in the last race, we we saw somebody lose about 30 seconds to the race arena, and that's not uncommon in the least. Yeah. So the, the, we're the just thing about race see. arena is that it's it's very consistent if you do it correctly. Like exactly, all, all the squits spawn in in the exact same positions every single time. So if you have your choreography figured out and everything all good, you can do the arena really quick. But like the moment you make a mistake and things start to get off script, it just piles on. Like it really piles on the time loss there. Um, right, exactly. And it just, it's one of those things where if it gets out of control, it's going to stay out of control the whole time. Yeah, um, it's, it's very hard to find your uh, center again after that. Yeah. So that will be coming up. And then in addition, of course, we have, um, we have Queen's Gardens into Dark Deep Nest. Um, yeah. Plenty of room for error there, a mistake in a dark room. Uh, well, not common for runners of these caliber. I mean, really, I think that one of the most impressive things to me um, for runners that are so practiced like this is just how well they know their dark rooms, because it is essentially right. muscle memory. Um, and it's honestly one of those things where you honestly see far fewer deaths to um, to dark rooms and such than you do to these boss fights because of how, how much you have to think on your feet in those settings and how That's things can good. adjust. But Water did actually die in darkness. I, I just now remembered this. Ooh, um, ooh unfortunate taking... for Edu yeah. that all the way back. Water did die in darkness in his last race. Um, and so it is somewhat important to remember that. Um, well, and, and here's the thing too, as somebody that lost a race to hitting a spike in Dark Deep Nest earlier in this tournament, every single time, at least for me, now that I go through Dark Deep Nest, that's in the back of my mind. Like that is a yeah. mental thing that just stays with me. Like, oh man, like it could happen, right? So. Right, and especially in something that is so dependent on memorization, it's almost that underlying voice in your head that's telling you that what you've learned is wrong. That like, right. you have, you, because that's the thing is like, the whole point of dark rooms is you're supposed to be incredibly consistent, get it right every time. But if you're learning it wrong, if you're making a mistake, then yeah, there's the underlying fear that that mistake is something that's ingrained. And so. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll see how this race arena goes for water. Um, it looks like, yeah, water made up another 10 seconds there. Oh so they're only gosh. 20 seconds apart. So 
I'm sure Waters probably feel like the pressure. I believe his quote to me was like, oh, I don't really have too many struggle segments except the race arena. We don't talk about that. We don't that. talk about um, that, yeah. Well, so... I, I believe Water also told us, you know, I, I think he said, hey, I know my PB's a lot slower, but don't look at the PB's. Like, that doesn't tell the whole story. Right, and um... he's he's totally keeping up with Edu right now, who has a low 53, and so yeah. that's pretty awesome. So far, things looking pretty good. Super clean, right, Serena? That was Incredibly awesome. Incredibly clean. Uh, yeah. Water, that, that, I mean, that's gotta be at least close to a gold for water, if not a gold. Oh, gosh, um, yeah. That is, that is super awesome. I mean, that's the thing is, like, you love to see it in race. Be mm -hmm. Because, honestly, with the Mantis Pogo water had, with some of the other things he messed up early on, probably would have just reset this run, right? But, right. I mean, look at this guy completely nailing a split he was absolutely worried about in race. And that just yeah, and goes to show. From a mentality's sake, that's got to be huge for Water, you know, because like you just said, this is a section that he's really nervous about, and for him to nail it, like absolutely nail it in a race, he's got to feel good about himself right now. He's going to be a lot more confident going through the rest of this run, I think. Right. <laughs> that confidence is very helpful in an area like Dark Deepness. And it, yeah, see, you is off, off beat. Choreography is changing. Um, and so it's unfortunate taking some damage here um and having to adjust but gets through it just significantly less clean than waters which waters i mean was a textbook arena that was really awesome from him yeah yeah it does get that full soul sometimes runners choose to take a heal um before yeah. picking up race but obviously time loss and when the race is this close i mean yeah you're probably not interested so you yeah. will take a deal after especially if Idu isn't watching the race and doesn't know the pace he might be thinking man i just had a two cycle umu the pressure's on like i need to play aggressive here yeah exactly oh water is an unfortunate dunk there it looks like water only saved three seconds in that arena which is interesting um so it may have just been general movement in and out of mound as well as like mm -hmm. other things going on um but yeah, Water will have to take some heals nice. here, which is unfortunate. But yeah, the runners are only 16 seconds apart. That is Jeez. very close. I mean, that could change just like that. W one dunk in the dark room and we're back to even. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, we're just going to have to see. Um, Water's heading into dark deepness right now. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll head down. We'll see if he likes to take a heal. Three masks is, it's just sort of comfort dependent. Mm, two masks is less than comfort dependent Water. probably gonna want to heal here yeah gonna heal all the way up we'll go around and use cyclone to get yeah. even more soul um i mean i suppose it's wise in the end after his darkness death water still might be feeling the pressure here um, yeah definitely i mean that's that was a lot let's let's not downplay how much time loss that was though in a, in a race that's 16 seconds apart like that was a no, lot absolutely. of time that was two cyclones on the enemies and oh, i think no. two heals and oh that's a dunk that is very oh, unfortunate. No. Um, resetting the room here. Um, that's the that's the yeah. right decision. That's the right. decision. It absolutely the room. is. Um, though I believe spike pits are, are still out and everything, so mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like he got that far. I mean, thankfully, he had the option to reset the room by falling in the first room of darkness. But yeah, this is a three room segment, um, oh, and it is no joke. That is. That is utterly backbreaking, honestly. Um, for what you know, he's he's clawing back into this race. It's getting really close, and then to take that, that that hurts. Yeah. Do we have a strain yeah, freeze just, here? Yeah, just psychologically. Um, I think that we do this maybe a sink. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Um, no, just a freeze. Unfortunate, but it looks like water has continued through darkness yeah. without taking any further damage, and should be good from here. Um. Yeah, and that that really stinks for water. I mean, because on top, I mean, he he stopped to to gather soul and heal twice, and that was a huge time loss. Then he gets dunked in the um in the first room, and has to reset it. Like, yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna be curious to see what the time difference is here after Hera. Yeah, it was see. really it was really unfortunate darkness. Um, and Edu, I mean, despite only having two masks at this point, is able to get through it cleanly. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, we're just gonna have to see. Water's gonna do this kill on the devout. Um, oh boy. Okay, yeah, he went for little the little bit that, spooky, that, but that's a planned damage tank. That's a that's a yeah. it's a fairly newer strategy. So th what that does is you great slash the um you great slash the devout, and then you can kill it with a D dark, um, which is a little bit slower. But what it does is it saves three hits of soul. 
Oh yeah, that's exactly that's like almost exactly the right amount of damage. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, and the, it, it, yeah, it's like exactly the right amount of damage. And then on the way out of um, yeah. Beast End, you you already have one soul to um, to kill the devout, on the way out, which is a bit faster. So it, yeah, it it's true. slower on the way in, but it makes up for itself on the way out. But the problem is, I think Water only has two hits of soul right now, so he doesn't have a spell anyway. Oh, that's unfortunate. No, it's it's yeah. funny to me because the only time I ever used nail arts casually was specifically to kill devouts uh, <laughs> really? with great flash. And so uh, it's just like I was just like, wow, wait, oh, it's my just... it's my casual playthrough. <laughs> um, but yeah, water, water got the devout water back up there. there. Yeah, unfortunate. Um, and we're just gonna see. Yeah, it looks like they're forty-seven seconds apart now. You do making up yeah. thirty seconds. Um, or extending his lead by 30 oh. seconds. Edu gets the cool dash slash kill there. That's a fairly yeah, new nice. strategy, I think, discovered by Murray. It's a very, yeah. very precise lineup. I've tried to learn it, and it's it's consistent if you get the, the lineup, but it's, it's very, very precise. Yeah, absolutely. And so we're going to be heading out from DV Stag have the 250 geo to buy it no problem um and we're heading back to hidden station where we're gonna go to the abyss we're using that king's brand um and yeah i mean we're just sort of going on from there um mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think that it's just heading out and i do have a knock knock joke at the abyss door oh i'm excited <laughs> this Term is good knock, this knock is jokes are quality this is this is actually from a friend of mine, so it's it's kind of quality. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, are we doing it now? Are we waiting? Or <laughs> um, we wait for them to get to the door. Okay. Well, there okay. they are. <laughs> we gotta got it. when the door opens, then we're we're here. Gotcha. Okay. Knock knock. Who's there? No voice to cry out suffering. No voice to cry out suffering. Who? I appreciate that one. Yeah, I like that one a lot. <laughs> I really like how you just because it's just you just sit there in silence and like I gotta be I gotta be honest. I was I was tempted to test you and be like, how long will she hold this up? <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, the thing is, like, I would have held it up for a while. Um, yeah. yeah, credits credits to my good friend Bubba Roo, um, for that joke. Please, please give me your knock knock jokes. Virgil and I are running very low. Um, but yes. I, I do love that one. Um, the water taking yeah, a hit. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh water, boy. Please. Just, just go, oh, just go. Jinkies. They're all my own. Oh, oh. Jinkies. Oh. That is. That is. Uh, that, I mean, oh. I, I, I hate to be like. I don't know if hate is a strong word, but I always dislike when I'm watching like commentary and the commentators are like, well, you know, anything could happen here. Like, I'm just gonna be the guy that ruins your day. Like that's probably the race. Yeah, no, that that's like like objectively, this is the race. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Right there, like. Because because at this point, like it would be one thing if Edu hadn't finished Shibling Climb, but Edu has, and like yeah. at this unless, point, I don't know. Even unless, even like a terrible know. abyss climb, like. It would take actual, like, it would probably take multiple deaths to THK for it. Yeah, it, it would take Edu, like, forgetting how to play the game and chain dying to THK, like, 30 times. That's about all I can imagine. I, yeah. I can't um, tell if that's a sink or what here, but... Oh, yeah, I think this is... This, I don't know what this is, um, because they typically don't sink unless we explicitly request, so I think it may have just been a freeze. Um, yep, there but we go. yeah, it is... It is really unfortunate um because in the end like a death to sibling climb um i always quote quacksilver on this um is that like a death on sibling climb is something that happens when you lose momentum sibling climb is based on momentum if you start going yeah. you keep going and as, as we saw as we discussed earlier this race water kind of panicked on one mask um, yeah, I think that was a lot of panic honestly because at the point water was at yes you've taken two hits but i mean you gotta keep going I, I, I oh, hate to like mon to yeah I hate to Monday morning quarterback this right because I'm not the one in that stressful situation but at the point he was at in that climb all of the siblings are behind you now like it it, it I I understand it's easier said than done but you can totally just like, be like okay like stay calm I know I've got the like black lines on the screen telling me I'm at one HP but you can totally just dash through there um and make it but again yeah it's, 
so it's a race I setting. Mean, He's probably nervous. He knows how close the race is. Yeah, is. absolutely. In the race setting, it is just so hard. It is so hard to tell. It's so hard to deal with. And Abyss Climb is like, that's the thing, is Abyss Climb is no joke. Um, this is a seriously difficult segment of the run. Um, it requires a lot of awareness that Sibling Drift is RNG. Um, yeah. And also and so, yeah, finding I mean, your own shade here. Yeah, because your shade <laughs> just gets mixed in. Yeah, um, I know. It's just another brick in the wall. But like... Yeah. Yeah, you you really can't blame. I mean, out of the places that you can die in this run, this is definitely uh, yeah. a pretty high up one of them. And so, even even for a runner of Water's caliber, this is like an understandable death. We can. Oh, I mean, yeah. I think that Rhino and I definitely agree on the reasons why it happened and things that could have gone better, but this is an understandable death for sure. And oh, here's yeah, a this time for me to. And I, I want to be clear to viewers too. Like these are both two incredibly high high runners, and we're being we're being very nitpicky about certain things because they're both very good and they're really aren't many major things to point out like so exactly <laughs> I've, I've got to point out something it's got to be little nitpicky things you know right if there were huge things to criticize like we could do that but there aren't these runners are yeah. very very good um yeah at what they do and like they put a ton of practice into it and so like to both of you i hope if you watch this back like y'all know that we're super impressed with what you're doing oh, and yeah. that everything we everything we nitpick at we mean in oh, the yeah kindest and most loving way possible so y'all can be even better absolutely yeah i mean I, I think as a service to the viewers too it's you know it, it's our job to point these things out as well right so of course it's definitely not a definitely not like meant to be a negative or personal thing yes either way no well, no, no, in, no in the meantime Edu had a pretty nice climb there that we kind of yeah. just glossed i was watching it but i was that, that's like the second time in comms that's happened where i just get so like into a person's climb i forget to talk about it like I'm just <laughs> watching intently. Just, just sort of hypnotized by the actual. I mean, abyss climb is, in my opinion, one of the coolest looking things in this run. Just because it's just, it's just exceptional how, how these runners just show complete mastery of all the movement they've acquired. Um, just to to get up there in such a cool way, and it's just yeah, very impressive thing. Um, yeah, but you just gonna be heading into. What? What did you say? Uh, Fifty three oh six. So. This is totally PBable. You think so? I think so. Um, uh, it's oh, tight. Yeah. It's tight. It's very I tight. I mean, yeah, it's just going to depend on heat, THK RNG, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. But you said 5306? 06. Yeah, it's it's very tight, but possible for like a mini PB, I think, here, if my math is correct. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to see. I mean, that's the thing is like, you could get that, like mob deer fight. like six parries, or you could just get bullet hell attack and be like, yeah. okay, and have full soul. And just yeah. bam, bam, boom. Yeah, Pretty bullet cool. hell attack is fantastic to get. Yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna have to see. So. Water in the climb now. Um, I'm doing good so far. Hey, hey, who earlier asked what I find most stressful about comms? Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Two completely different, exciting things going on. It's hard to know which one to talk oh, about. No. Water yeah, water taking a fall. Man. Meanwhile, Edu here. Um, Doing a good job staying close here. He's getting a lot of dash attack, which is definitely not what we want to see in this yeah, category. We want to stay close. Um, He's handling it really well, though. Yeah, dealing with it the best he can, um, which you'll have to see, because in the end, it's all about trying to be adaptable. This is definitely not going to be a PB, but yeah, it will be, be a 53 for sure, um, which definitely you love to see. Um, yeah. So you should be pretty happy with this, especially in a race setting where, like, PB's dead I now. mean, like, yeah. miss missed like one cycle on umu like this is pretty good yeah. for you to be thk has got to be like one hit yeah yeah there you go so this will be, well be a mid 53 um low 53 and yeah and it's definitely good work for me to hear yeah yeah so that'll be like 53 i think i said 53 26 it should be um I always like to inform people that from the moment you start absorbing THK to the timer stop is about 20 seconds. I don't know why I said 26, I meant 22. But yeah, it's about 20 seconds from the moment you start absorbing, which is why... Yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go, perfect. Which is why on stream on multiple occasions, you have seen me getting really, really, really hype about a run when the timer's still running, just because I know it's 20 seconds from absorb. Yeah. So we'll I'm see water good. now heading to this fight. Um, I right. I would have to imagine PB is also dead for water after that yeah, death. Yeah, PB is PB is presumably dead. Um, 
but I think it'll be it'll be relatively close. Um, Absolutely. Simply by virtue of the fact that, like, I mean his his current PB is fifty five forty two, so he'll like be respectably close, barring the death. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a respectable time with with that uh the death he took in sibling. Yeah, with I the mean, death to sibling climb. Yeah. We talk about Crystallized Mound being like probably the worst place in the run to take a death, and if that's the case, then Sibling Climb is probably the second worst place in the run to take a death. I'd put Green Path up there too. If you died a Hornet one. Oh, that's, that's true. That's awful. Like that just hurts so much. Yeah. And just like it's... psychologically. Because at least like if you die in Crystallized Mound, you've already you opened up the. Uh, you have C Dash, and you've already opened up that one um, pathway after Crystal Heart, so we don't yeah. have to go through all of Crystal Peaks again. With Green Path, if you died a Hornet one, you're literally just repeating the entire segment. Right, and I mean, we actually saw in the last race from Zero died in Crystallized Mound and made a full comeback because yeah, that was insane. Was able to just sort of handle it, and I mean, it was a time loss, but in the end, Water. Yeah, this is a bit off. of a jinkies moment for Water. We'll elect to take a heal here. Wise choice, in my opinion. Um, oh jeez. Also unfortunate. Water, please don't die. Oh my God. <laughs> Whenever somebody shade dashes through. <laughs> Do, a, a, um, Do you even dashes. sharp shadow? Yeah, no, I mean, I I gotta say, never once in my entire life in speedrunning or my casual playthrough have I ever equipped sharp shadow. That is so disappointing. It is the best charm in the game. I don't know. <laughs> sharp shadow water. THK is awesome. Water giving us all a mini heart attack here while fighting THK. Yeah, water it, really, really sort of advertising the charm fury of the fallen. Um, Without unfortunately fury. was unable to get it <laughs> at the beginning of this uh, run, but will be a spokesman for it throughout this fight. Well said, well said. Uh, and yeah, that should be a quick death. GG's, oh, water. Okay. This GG's. Be... Yes, oh, that was... Gears, oh yeah, me too. I just realized that as well we started the movie. Um, I, I also okay. forgot to switch audio after Edu took the lead RTA too, so I'm a terrible player. Wow. Unforgivable. Unforgivable, yeah. Can't I can't even believe myself. I just got so caught up in the, in the hype. I, I can't believe I've done this either. But GG's to both runners. I've sent them both, <laughs> GG's um, to both. the invite. Yeah, we'll have invites and and yeah, we'll we'll ask them some questions about about life, the universe and everything once they get in here. Yeah, we're not even going to talk about Hollow Knight, just going to be about stuff, you know. <laughs> just kidding, about stuff. If you have <laughs> questions in the chat, um, put them in the chat. That that was a great sentence. It was very well crafted. Um, but yeah, if you <laughs> yes. have questions, let us know, and we'll ask them. That was, in fact, an English language sentence constructed with proper grammar and words. <laughs> it also made sense, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And, um... Feel free. Okay, we'll drag them in here, though. Oh, do we? We can do that? Well, today I learned. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, folks. <laughs> GG. Hello. Hey. GG. GG's friends. GG's. Yeah, so first and foremost, um, congratulations to Edu. Uh, how are you feeling about your performance in this race and how things went? Uh, well, I mean, overall, it was a good run. For sure, I was... 15 seconds from pb but like there were a couple really bad places for me like early game and uh kind of mid game like soul sanctum sea peaks didn't really go too well yeah and we overall, commented, overall um, a good run yeah we were commenting you know that you're the recent new holder of the the, the dive com sob and you got really really bullied that <laughs> split by warping soul twister is just really unfortunate yeah uh, I've, I've grinded that split for enough that I know how much RNG can screw you, so right. I wasn't surprised. Yeah, definitely yeah. A, a common place where RNG can mess with runners there. Um, and Water, GG's, um, how are you feeling about your race? Um, you know, obviously, the, taking that death of sibling climb, definitely not what you wanted there, but aside from that, how are you feeling about everything? I, I would have said that I'm happy to go out of the tournament like this, but... After sibling climb, that's a bold faced lie. Mm. Yeah, uh, definitely understandable. So definitely. I, I can I can explain what happened there since you were speculating, I heard that. Uh so mm -hmm. I was on one HP, I saw, oh, all the siblings are behind me. This is mm -hmm. fine. Uh I can just jump up, perform a wall jump, 
uh, and then a dash to the right. Should, should send me up, no problem. Only problem is I didn't get the wall jump because I didn't jump high enough. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that's that's, really that's, that's so unfortunate, yeah. And, and again, I mean, sibling climb, for, for viewers who don't know, that is an incredibly common place to die, and it's a very difficult yeah, place. Yeah, so you know, tough. Unfortunate. Um... Yeah, I mean, definitely, I always like to see when a runner, you know, after something like that, finishes out the run, so definitely GG's on that. Um, uh, uh, Herm, do you have anything? Yeah, Herm? sorry, my headphones broke again. I'm really oh, enjoying it. Yeah, um, oh. yeah, Water, you talked about the whole race split and how we don't talk about that, but, I mean, how did you feel about your arena today? It golded. it. That's what we, we thought. We figured, yeah, we Let's figured go. it golded. It oh, I'm very, so very happy cool. for you. Yeah, that was a really awesome arena. Yeah, definitely went really well. Um, one thing I always like to ask um, when I commentate is to, to both of the runners, did you have the race open and were you watching the commentary or checking your opponent's pace at all throughout the race? I didn't have the stream open at all. I just went through our run. Nice. And that's it, yeah. I mean, I was in chat you? from time to time, so... Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I didn't catch you, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for um, example, after after Monomon split, I just kinda wrote sick or something. I don't I don't even remember it was a blur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean the the follow-up question I always have then is, you know, because you were watching stream, did that affect any of your decision making or how you played this race at all? Uh I, I lost I, I was slightly nervous because you said I was nervous uh, entering Green Path. <laughs> oh my gosh! It, it, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh no. Oh no. Super hard comms curse. I feel terrible. That is that is so sad. Oh no. Wow, Rhino, look oh, yeah. look what you did. I know. Uh, I can't believe I've done this. <laughs> look what Water's doing right now, real quick. We can okay, ignore actually, that. Okay, actually, that's that's so much worse than worse than literally any commentator's curse. I, would just I, I, say, I did say that if I lose, I, I will kill Milo. You said that if you won, you would spare Milo. That didn't mean that you had to kill Milo if you lost. It wasn't required. Mm, I, would just I, mean, like I, th I think it's required. That I it, do that not inherently implies the Milo. opposite. That's it true. It's highly unethical. I am going to make an entire tutorial called How Not to Kill Milo Tutorial, in which yeah. you will learn how not to do this. Um. um and I think it was, well, I think, um, Edu, you had mentioned that you've been struggling with uh, C peaks a lot lately, I, th I think. Was that you who said that? Yeah, I said that, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, how did you feel about your C peaks today? It looked fairly clean, no major mistakes, no real big issues. Well, I don't know. I thought it didn't really go like too well. Like, mm -hmm. it could have been better, that's for sure. Sure, sure. I made some smaller mistakes, but overall didn't lose too much time i guess like maybe 10 15 seconds at most. yeah we were we were definitely commentating that you know because that's been a problem area for you um to, to get out of there without any deaths or like run killers probably a big sigh of relief after you finish the that segment huh yeah and also um spike dunking in the dark room that kind of made me a little bit nervous yeah yeah i i saw that i was kind of worried for you they're not gonna lie <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, it, was, it was an incredibly close race all the way. I think yeah. after Umu, what was the time difference? I think like, like it 20 was seconds? Nine, I think we were down to 19 seconds. Yeah, after Umu. It was awesome. Like, truly a, a pleasure to commentate for both of you folks. Absolutely. Yeah. So, this um, was a good thing that I didn't watch stream then, because that would have <laughs> made me a lot more nervous. Yeah, it's always fascinating, like... I like asking runners, you know, because some runners like to, to watch because they'll make decisions like, okay, I'm really far ahead, so I'm going to play a little safer. And other runners I know, like you, you're just like, okay, I don't want to watch. I'm just going to stay in my own little world and run my fastest. And that works really well for some people. Mm -hmm. So I'm always really interested in seeing how people play that in a race setting. But yeah, so, um, Edu, I think, did you finish the tournament three and two now? Is that, or? Uh, uh, he finished four, four one. one, I finished oh, three. Oh, he finished. Two. 
Okay, so 4-1 Edu. So you're going on to the top 16 then with a 4-1, and one, I believe. I think everybody with a 4-1 yeah, goes on. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's guaranteed. Yeah. So yeah. first off, big congratulations to you. Um, that's that's incredible. And I think Water, I think you'll be... I think... I don't remember what the tiebreaker is for the 3-2 and two uh, runners. It's, I should probably it's strength know that. of schedule, so how many sets your opponents win. But yeah. there's I, also tiebreaker. I, I think I got somewhat... Yeah. I. I don't want to say lucky, but that's kind of what happened uh, during my middle rounds. So I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think my strength of schedule was going to be good enough to carry me to top 16. Yeah, I think they are doing like a tiebreaker race or something, though. But it, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, again, I should probably know this more than anyone. <laughs> yeah. as, a, as a three and two runner. Yeah, right. Um, but Edu, as somebody guaranteed um, to, to seed in the top 16 now for the playoff bracket, um, what are some parts of your run that you're really going to be looking to clean up and um, and work on going into the, to the di more difficult playoff bracket here? Uh, we'll see peaks for sure. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. There, I don't have any like specific uh, specific places where I have to practice. It's just overall um, getting more consistent at everything. Cool. I guess. I just have to do more runs and get consistent. That's it. Yeah, and, and water and in, in the event that you do have to do like a tiebreaker race or something, you know, same question to you. What are some areas that you're like, man, I really want to go back to practice and clean this this section up or that section? Uh, I'm I'm not entirely sure. At this point, I'm like roughly equal equally good in all of the splits, except for maybe D Dark, where I still don't do the dash only method for the dark room mm -hmm. so besides that i'm not too sure i just have to clean up my movement in general yeah absolutely all, all skills is really that type of category isn't it like it's just cleaning up one or two seconds yeah, here and there sure. that adds it's up, like yeah. well i didn't die and i didn't really get too bullied by any boss but yeah i have like four minutes of time saved to my son yeah like, that's so common <laughs> in this category just like yeah. to be able to clean things up yeah so i mean on that note i don't have any more questions how about you herm no i'm all good unless you folks have any other shout outs or stuff as always a um, massive thank you to speed gaming for organizing all this stuff making it all run so smoothly to Somni and pisces for tding this whole deal and, and making everything set up in that aspect um ggs to runners thank you to chat for being cute and a lovely audience um mm. and always Thank you to Rhino for being a wonderful oh, co-commentator. Thank you, Herm, for being wonderful to commentate with. It's always a pleasure. Um, and to, to both Edu and Water, anything else in general that you two want to say? Any Anything you want to shout out before we hop off? Mm, shout outs to Underline. With Without him, I wouldn't even play the game. Shout outs to Underline, yeah. Here you go. Underline's great. Like, <laughs> four months ago, I, I was not versed in Hollow Knight at all. And, you know, today I almost got sub-55. That's oh, dude, you only been playing this game for like four months. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> That's insanity. Oh my god. If if you apply yourself to something, you can become a lot better than you think. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so su super well done then. Um and Edu, anybody you'd like to shout out or anything you want to say to the to all of our viewers before we hop off? I guess. Uh I don't know. I guess I'll just show my own channel. Like yeah. Yeah, Edward 25. I I do Hollow Knight speedrunning, and I've also played play a lot of the Spelunky 2 now, and speedrun it. Yeah, nice. so if you're interested. Awesome. All right, well, that's that's going to be it for our show today. I think we have we have one more race today, which will be on Speed Gaming 4 at 4 p.m. Eastern, um, and that'll be be between Thunder and the Hollow MC. Uh, commentated by Kali and Sylvie. That's going to be a great yeah, race on comms duo. That'll be fun. But yeah, um, yeah, for now, it's it, we're, we're signing off. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out, and it was an absolute pleasure. We'll see you on another episode of Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight All Skills. Goodbye, folks. <laughs> <laughs>